Big Mix is brought to you by the Arrow Meta Show. We're broadcasting on Liberated Syndication, twitch.tv forward slash Arrow Meta Show, and is in association with the Old School Lane podcast. Pix Mix is brought to you by oldschoollane.blogspot.com and is associated with the Aaron Meta Show. Welcome back to Pix Mix. My name is Aaron. And my name is Georgia. And uh, I know people are probably tuning into this episode thinking, uh, oh, wow, they've finally seen Toy Story 4 already. Um, not yet. And uh, so I'm sure we're going to get a lot of screaming comments uh, underneath this video now saying, why haven't you seen Toy Story 4 yet? And it's like, you know, well, because... Uh, you know, um, we, me and Patricia are adults and, uh, you know, we have other things going on in our lives right now. And so uh, we do promise you eventually we will get to Toy Story 4, but uh, we do have something for you in the interim. And uh, to be honest with you, I think it's before we actually get into it, I think it is a cause of debate because... Uh, Patricia, I mean, you know, in Pix Mix, we said that at the very end of the show, the very end of the first run, that we'd reviewed every single Pixar film. Yes, but, we uh, did. Yeah, um, I think some people will actually debate that we've actually haven't. Yeah, that's true because um, unlike in Dream Machine, in which we did cover all, you know, most of the theatrical films, and then we were thinking, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, believe it or not, you know, DreamWorks did do a direct-to-video movie, and so this will be the only one that they would do. And so then we were like, okay, let's not make that mistake again, and let's actually talk about it early on as opposed to doing it at the last minute. And so now I think we're kind of you know, fixing our mistake. Yeah, I think we've also uh, fallen guilty probably, you know, opening up Pandora's box because, you know, if uh, in Dream Machine, if we were going to do uh, Joseph King of Dreams, there is another particular bunch of, well, there's another particular movie that we'd also have to look at as well. So, uh, Patricia, are you ready to go uh, to Infinity and Beyond? Yes, let's do it. Here we go. So Buzz Lightyear of Star Command The Adventure Begins is a 2000 Disney animated director video for and TV movie uh, that acts as the pilot to the television series Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Uh, so this takes place before the actual TV series. So it's listed actually as episode zero and it features Buzz Lightyear uh, being uh, the uh, leading uh, star, uh, space ranger of Star Command. And uh, this actually tells the origin story of how he came to, uh, be, to uh, be, be together with his team. Yes. So if you are interested, so this came out like, I believe, like either before or after Toy Story 2. And this was kind of like a way so that because Toy Story was becoming like hugely popular around Disney at the time. Uh, and this was like during the time in which like if it wasn't a direct to video movie, then they would be having an animated series. There were a lot of animated series for Disney back in the 90s. Um, there would be like uh, there was Tarzan, the animated series. There was Hercules, the animated series, Aladdin, the animated series, Little Mermaid, the animated series. And not too much of a surprise, this would be an animated series. And I believe this would be the first of, of you know, this would be the first, uh, you know, unlike um Unlike DreamWorks, in which like it seems like ev almost every single film has to have an animated series to tie into the movies, this would be the only animated series that would happen around Pixar. That is until like almost 20 years later, in which we'll be having a Monsters Inc. series, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, but here's the thing about this: like, I mean, you know, we've had so many series, you know, based on movies, and uh, you know, I, I guess. Uh, it isn't too much of a surprise that, uh, you know, we have the Mask animated t animated series. And so, you know, there's been movies out there. And also Ace Ventura also had its own animated series as well. So, you know, this was already a thing 
I think uh, when uh, you know, obviously, uh, Disney started like you know, uh, uh, you, know j- j- you know, jarring up the you know the animation machine and started uh, you know uh, uh, creating all these um, uh, you know TV series. But uh, I think uh, you know, I think the biggest driver I think for the fact that we had all of these I think was obviously the Disney Channel. And the fact that they were yeah. so desperate for programming, I think, at the time, because I mean, the launch of the Disney Channel wasn't—I mean, it wasn't a—it wasn't a steady ship. Like, uh, it didn't exactly, you know, bring in like you know the massive amounts of viewers that I think it was going to bring in. And I didn't think it was until you know they started doing Aladdin and they started doing uh, you know things like Buzz Lightyear and they started bringing in things like Recess and all these other uh, animated series that they really started, you know, when they started to uh, really have a go at this. I think then when Disney Channel really started to take off. Yeah. And and the reason why is because uh, we have to remember what the Disney Channel was. You know, back then, the Disney Channel was like a bunch of, you know, TV movies. They had the Mickey Mouse Club. They would showcase their classic uh, Disney shorts and, you know, reruns of, you know, the, um, you know, when Walt Disney would be talking about the behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah, it was like the... It was like the the beginning point of the Disney Channel. And, you know, they had their fair share of programs like DuckTales and Darkwing Duck and Tailspin, basically the Disney afternoon program. But then around the late 90s, um, things started to shift and change because um, for anybody who uh, has, um, you know, read my uh, Nickelodeon uh, blogs, you already know this, but... Uh, Around the late 90s, a lot of people who formerly worked at Nickelodeon left to work on the Disney Channel. Geraldine Laybourne, who was the, you know, president of Nickelodeon during the golden era, had left to be the president of the Disney Channel for a couple of years right before starting the Oxygen Network. And uh, Paul and Joe, uh, who, you know, worked on Rugrats and Hey Arnold, they went off to do Recess. Um, Mitchell... um, uh, <clears throat> sorry, Mitchell Kriegman, who, uh, you know, he created Clarissa Explains It All. He went to do Bear in the Big Blue House. So a lot of people, you know, put in, you know, their ideas into this. And that's when we kind of had all these shows from the, you know, Disney lineup, such as uh, Recess and Pepper Inn and The Weekenders and such. So I think that because with the popularity of Toy Story and the fact that they were doing their own animated series into film uh, based on of films they decided hey you know toy stories is really popular buzz lightyear is really popular let's see if we can do the same thing and you know they this isn't the first time in which uh, you know disney would you know do a movie a directed video film based off of a pilot we already had that with the return of jafar which was a, a pilot for the aladdin tv series um Tarzan and jane i believe was also a pilot for the animated series that could come out Uh, Lilo and Stitch 2, I believe, was a similar thing. So this isn't the first time this has happened. And uh, what's interesting to note is that, you know, some of the people who worked on this were Disney alums uh, who, you know, we have Mark McCorkle and Bob Schooley writing the script for this. And they created Kim Possible and Tad Stones, who directed it. He would direct, um, you know, other shows such as like um, Adventures of Gummy Bears, Chippendale Rescue Rangers and... His claim to fame would be the creation of Darkwing Duck. So we do have a lot of um, good people in terms of, you know, how this was uh, done. But you have to remember that this was a pilot and maybe it may not be as like groundbreaking or as amazing as, um, you know, you would think in terms of like, oh, a TV, uh, you know, a movie based off of Buzz Lightyear. But if you, you know, think of it as like, you know, featuring the origins of Buzz Lightyear and that it was the starting point for an upcoming series, then as a as a standalone film, it's actually pretty decent. Yeah. I was going to say, you made a mention to Darkwing Duck there, and the first thing that came into my mind was, you know, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the Pixar movie that's not in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right that's true like oh, I, it's true because with the exception of the shorts you know uh, you know some of the shorts um yeah this is this will probably be one of the very first times in which pixar does delve into 2d animation i guess you know this was around 2000 and i don't i mean to be fair you know we've already had like our ver- you know various cg animated shows reboot the donkey kong country tv series and uh, i think around you know like a year later the you know the jimmy uh yeah the jimmy neutron tv series will be coming out and the movie so i don't know if maybe they maybe they just didn't have the budget to do a 3d film or you know a 3d animated series but 
I think, it, you know, for the most part, it looks okay. Yeah, I think uh, maybe it would have been a bit... I mean, keep this in mind. I think the idea of... Uh, at least this is my opinion on this, right? Uh, I came away from Buzz Lightyear, A Star Command thinking, wow, this was a bit of satire for the Saturday morning cartoon show. Like, you know, like the... Uh, here's the, you know, somewhat Mary Sue-ish superhero who looks like he can't be beaten. Then there's, like, the stereotypical Zerg who would be kind of like, you know... He kind of reminds me of Dr. Robotnik from The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, you know, he's like, I'm evil, and that's my, that's my thing, you know, and so it's like, uh, yeah, for me, uh, I came away from this thinking, like, you know, they, they, they were making fun of every, you know, all the tropes that were, like, in Superman, it kind of reminded me a bit like Earthworm Jim at one point, like, yeah, except, yeah, it wasn't sure. so, except without, you know, except with less Ren and Stimpy. You know, it's like, you know, it was, uh, it had, it was a toned down, like, this, this movie, um, knows that it's not, it's not a serious kind of, like, movie, if you, if you know what I mean. Like, it knows it's, like, a, an overstretched, uh, you know, Saturday morning cartoon show. Like, this is, like, kind of, like, some kind of special for it, you know? So, it's, like, it's, uh, um, I, I'm glad that it looks like it's self-aware, because, you know, you can see, like, uh, you know, like, in every single, um, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, kind of, like, you know, I, I'm trying to find a good genre for. I guess in every kind of like sci-fi kind of thing, you know, it has like the like the, the 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 monologue lines at the bottom, and it tells you like where the location is and everything like that. And even that wasn't taking itself seriously. At one point, it was like you know uh, saying, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, layer of Emperor Serg, duh," you know, kind of like something <laughs> like that. You know, it was uh, no not line for line, but uh, you can tell like you know you are in a fun show. You know when yeah, you when, sure. when you're this when you were looking at this so. Um, yeah, so, and it's actually here's, interesting here's a, that we ha- There's a bizarre oh, thing ahead. about this I wanted to point out to you. You know, uh, but you know, who do you know who voiced Buzz Lightyear in the mo- in the uh d- in the director video release? Um Patrick Warburton? Uh no. It was actually Tim Allen himself. Yeah, I know, but uh, originally they were going to have Patrick Warburton as Buzz. Yeah. But then they were they changed their mind and saying, "Yeah, let's put um you know Tim Allen into it, and then I think in the TV. Well, here's the thing series- about this. Yeah, in the TV series, they kept they they kept Patrick Warburton for for the yeah. role, obviously for, for continuity issues. But uh, there's, there's, you know, for the movie, re- the director video release, he's actually voiced by Tim Allen, which is yeah. bizarre for me. Like you know, it felt you know because I've actually watched a little bit of Buzz Lightyear: Star Command before. Uh, I came watching into this to get an idea of kind of like what the show is like, and so um, you know you can definitely tell like it's an origin story from from the get go uh, wh- when you do this. But you know it was so jarring to uh, at some points to hear like you know hey this is the actual voice of Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story franchise, you know from the from the movie I mean, series. To me, yeah. to me it's not uh, because you know Tim Allen was starting to get really popular at the time. You know he had Home Improvement, he had the Santa Claus film, so I think with the Santa Claus. And with um, Toy Story, you know, he was under Disney's good graces. So maybe they decided, hey, you know, let's see if we can, you know, bring him in for the uh, for this uh, direct to video film. And then maybe as time went on, um, I th- then maybe they decided, yeah, let's put Patrick Warburton in for the, um, you know, for Buzz Lightyear um uh, for the TV series. And, you know, this was around the same time that, you know, he would have been doing Kronk from Emperor's New Groove and yeah. he would have voiced Joe from Family Guy. Yeah, imagine being Tim Allen at that time and it's like, you know, you, you, you travel back to you travel back to that time. It's like he's like on top of the world. And then you go to him and say, yeah, uh, you know, in about, uh, you know, 20 years time, you're going to be do basically do, rounding off a conservative point, a talking points on Fox News. He's like, uh? it's like, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, because of his show being canceled and I think that, you know, the Toy Story series is like one of the few things that he has left. Yeah. So um, going into this movie. And so we get um, the introduction, uh, funnily enough, of Toy Story, you know, uh, uh, with uh, Rex finally getting his hands on the movie video and uh, then trying to like get jam it into the uh, into the TV, <clears throat> into the into the you know those televisions that have, like the VCR things at the bottom. Yeah, of I, I yeah, actually like, used to own one of those things. Believe it or not. Funny, yeah, I actually own one of them too. And so it was, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I always didn't really like owning those types of things because it was like kind of like, well, if one thing goes wrong with it, the whole thing is broken. You know, That's like, true, like yeah. I, I always liked having like, you know, uh, I, you know, back when I had my VC, when I had my VHS collection, like, um, you know, I uh, always liked to have like a separate video recorder. I didn't like the combos. At all. Yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't even have com. I didn't even buy like the the VCR DVD combos. I even get them separate too. 
Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was, uh, it was cheaper, too, to do that as well back in the day. So it makes you wonder why I know they sold those things. But anyway, um, so um, you, you, we get that scene, and uh, obviously it's to introduce that, uh, you know, this is not... Um, I guess it was a good thing to do, because, like, I, I think if they did it right off the blue, it'd be kind of like, so... Um, is this, like, a prequel to Toy Story before Buzz Lightyear was, you know, in Andy's room? Or is this, you know, it, like, uh, I guess you could say it does set up the fact that, look, this is just a Saturday morning cartoon of Buzz Lightyear. It's not the Buzz that's in Andy's room. It's just a cartoon representation of him. It's kind of like yeah. saying, like, you know, like, no, you know, Stanley Ipkiss in the Mask animated series is not the same Stanley Ipkiss in the movie. Like, it's a totally different thing. Like, you yeah. know, so they, that they, was a good they, thing they did the same thing. Um, they did the same thing in the Fairly Odd Parents when they were um, doing the Crash Nebula um, pilot, uh, in which you know Timmy was you know watching was wanting to watch Crash Nebula, and you know for some reason he couldn't. And when the when the TV turned on, you know there were it was playing the actual um, ep- you know episode, and yeah, it, it's formed similar in which uh, you know we have the toys gathered together and they want to watch the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command uh, VHS tape. Just like you said, if it was like a Saturday morning cartoon, and I'm glad that they did this because it, 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 you know, right off the bat, it does make us feel like we're still in the Toy Story world. That um, it's not just like going jumping the shark and saying like this is going to be the new version of Toy Story because you know we already had Toy Story two and. Um, you know, going from that all the way up to this would have just been like a total whiplash. Mm-hmm. So, um, going into the story, so we go into the first act, and uh, Buzz Lightyear tragically loses his partner, and uh, therefore that sets up, which I think is really good, actually, because it sets up to, like, uh, where he says, like, uh, I will never have another partner now because of what happened, and, like, he yeah. was able to save him, and uh, I don't know, but, you know, when talking about warp, you know, dark matter in this movie, like, uh, I think they made his reveal too obvious. I think. Yeah, I think. they they did. Uh, you know what? I I wish that this would have been pulled off so much better because if you ever seen something like the X Men animated series in which like towards the beginning, you know, uh, there was an X Men um, character there that died much earlier on, and More. then it affected. Every- yeah, they- thank you. That. And, you know, it affected everybody, and especially with Wolverine. And you do, do get to feel that sense of, like, dread and sadness. And then, you know, we, we would have the, the plot twist later on. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that they should have played it off something a little bit better. Like, maybe if we got to know Buzz and Warp, I mean, Warp Dark Matter a little bit more, as opposed to, like, just, like, really quickly. Like, maybe we would have gotten some more time to see their dynamics, to see their chemistry together, to see them do a mission. Like, I, I wish that that first act would have been just a little bit longer. longer. Yeah, and also, on top of that as well, like, uh, the, the fact that he told about the little green men and their, like, uh, their, um, their, like their, their central core... I told them kind of like, you know, in, in kind of like in, in saying, I, I would have liked to have liked that to have been like a moment rather than basically just, you know, uh, a, a throwaway kind of like, you know, talking in like, you know, while they were doing the mission in that. Like, he's like, so you can see like, you know, uh, they're like, uh, you know, on off duty and it's like, oh, hey, Buzz, like, you know, why do the little green men all kind of like have this mind think, you know, kind of like this group think. And it's like, oh, it's mm-hmm. because of this. And that's how he learns about it. And it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a bonding kind of mi- mi- moment between the two. And then that will be the reason why, you know, obviously Lord Zerg learned about that, you know, for the plot of, you know, for obviously for the plot of the movie. But, you know, in, in regards to, you know, the fact that his transformation to like to, to uh, Agent Z, like, I, I felt like, you know, that should have been something. I just felt that they should have kept him in the shadows, kind of like Alien, kind of like, you know, he's like, you, you know, the threat is there, but you don't exactly know what it is. And then in like the, you know the probably toward either towards the end of the final you know end of the second act or like in within the final third you finally learn the reveal the re, the um the the identity of this guy and then you're just like oh my god I can't believe it's him like I thought he was yeah. dead like you know right, it's like right. uh, you know they made they made they made his death so obvious in the in the in, in the beginning like you know it was uh, so um you know you know you really did in a way you did kind of feel like you know when when he lost and you know the the reaction to that too. But I felt like I felt like they made it far too obvious. I really thought, you know, given that the whole thing was uh, feeling a bit like satire, I really thought they were going to like just make that as the joke. Like it's like, oh, uh, you know, uh, he obvi- you know, he, he gives like really like dead hints to like Buzz that he is actually a you know Agent Z is uh, you know um, warp dark matter, but he doesn't catch on, and then he just gets yeah. frustrated and just say, look, it's me. 
Like, you know, I was expecting that kind of scene to, like, come in, but it wasn't. Yeah, right? that, that would have been that would have been hilarious, actually. That would have been, like, you know, I've been the villain all along. Oh, and it's like, like, but wait, huh? you're dead. It's like, <laughs> it's like, wait, you died. It was like, oh, but I planned on doing this um, throughout the entire time. It all started with this and this and that. And it's like, yeah, but I see you die. And he's like, you're not getting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I did this and this and that. And, you know, I planned all of this and I've been waiting for you. I'm going to do my final goal. But I thought you died. Yeah, it would have been funny if it was like you remember when. Uh, I mean, we'll get into the final act in a minute. There, so there is something like you know, if they did that monologue and then that was like the you know the uh, the distraction for like you know the other heroes to save the day. Like you know that that would have been quite hilarious to like end on. But uh, I mean, but you know, in regards to this, yeah, this could have been done much better in my opinion. Yeah. And so maybe, maybe they didn't have the time. Maybe you know they. I, I don't know, but I, I think that, yeah, you're right. They should have done this a little bit better. So, yeah. yeah, we have Buzz, who's really upset that he had lost his partner and that he doesn't want anybody else to be his partner. He wants to work everything out alone. And, you know, for we have in, the introduction of these other characters. We have um, Princess Miranova. We have... Um, Oh, hold on, I have a message. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, we have uh, Princess Miranova, we have um, Commander Nebula, and then we have this janitor character. Yeah, um, you know, C Commander Nebula's role in all of this is very confused. Because it's kind of like, you know, he's supposed to be, like, I'm assuming, like, you know, the c commander of, like, the whole, sp you know, Space Ranger fleet, and yet he seems to just let people kind of get away with whatever they want. Like he's not mm -hmm. all that bothered to like you know really put his foot down when they when 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 the you know he's like I don't know if he like he's because he has a sense because he knows that the space what the space rangers do is like you know within right or justice or whatever but he looks very weak in this movie. When you yeah, were. and um, let's see who else we have um, XR who's this little robot and uh, Booster uh, that's the one who's like the janitor and um, yeah. yeah we have all of those ah. um, characters and um, you know they, they have their own bit of personality uh, which I thought was really nice you know Miranova is like this like you know kick-ass female protagonist xr is like this really smart alien booster is kind of like this shy yet very determined janitor who wants to be a space ranger yeah. so i love xr's character development in this the fact that you know he was uh you know basically made by he, he's basically johnny five in this you know like he was made kind of like you know he wasn't supposed to do this like you know he's kind of did i say it's kind of like maybe this is how he expected gadget should have come along in that in that awful you know Marvel Broderick movie Dare I say? Oh, like, oh I be... see what you're saying. Like, you know, right. somebody who was um, made for something else, but then turned out to be a good guy. Yeah. Well, no, I was saying, like, you know, like, uh, you know, the reason why he's shooting toothpaste all over the place is because, you know, they were, you know, they were building this experimental robot out of this guy, but then, you know, whatever happened went haywire, and therefore, you know, that's the reason why he ended up being Inspector Gadget. You know, like, he oh, was right, to be, right, right. He was supposed I, to I be, like, you know, this, this super cop, but they, you know, like, Robocop, but then they ended up kind of screwing it all up, you know, like, and then we stuck like this. And that ended gotcha. up, you know, and they went in that direction rather than, you know, intentionally making him stupid, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's just me. But yeah, nothing special gadget. Um, so, you know, for me, um, yeah, I like Princess Miranova in, in this. And also, I tell you what, I think Boost is a very important part of this. And now let me explain why. Because, um, you know, Buzz Lightyear, you can definitely tell, is very full of himself in this movie. A little bit. You can. It kind of shines up a little bit, and uh, you know. And I guess he has a right every to kind of be so because obviously he's like you know he's uh, you know the guy who goes in and does the most dangerous missions out of the whole out of all of people. But you know, in, I'm really glad that Booster came along and he had this kind of connection with him and saying you know because there's one there's this one scene where Booster goes into unauthorized you know uh, unauthorized access into uh, you know the, uh, the 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 space the space. Uh, uh, spaceship bay, and so and then he gets told off by one of the corporals. But then Buzz Lightyear comes in and says, "Oh, hey, you know, uh, I, I want this place cleaned up pronto." And so you know, gives him a reason to be there. And even though he knows that he's not supposed to be there, but just kind of covers for him anyway, you know. And so I'm really glad that he had that moment with him because I feel like you know he kind of makes Buzz not dickish i guess you could say like he's not uh you know he, he does care about other people who are you know you know not as high ranked as he is you know and so he has he has that connection with other people and so that made him like like you know, i made him like a proper good guy yeah know? for sure and it's actually really interesting that um 
you know, we, we would know Buzz Lightyear as, uh, you know, a, a solo character in Toy Story. So I was thinking that maybe because in Toy Story 2, Woody was actually part of a roundup gang with we had Jesse, the prospector and Bullseye. Do you think that this is like the Buzz Lightyear equivalent in which we have, you know, Buzz Lightyear with a, with a group of uh, people in his group? Like we have Buzz Lightyear, we have Princess Mira Nova. We have VR and we have Booster, so maybe we I, I could have seen think, toys of them. I don't think Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, I think, was a reaction to Woody's Roundup. I think, you know, Toy Story, well, Toy Story, well, Toy Story 2, actually, I should clarify this point, actually. Toy Story 2 did come out in 1999, and then Buzz Lightyear yeah. of Star Command did come out in 2000, so. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't think it was, at least this is my opinion, I don't think it was. I think, uh, you know, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command would have worked, I think, with or without, Toy, you know, Toy Story 2. <laughs> I no, 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 I'm not opinion. talking about that. I'm talking about, like, as in, as of toys, you know? Do you think that maybe he's part of a toy lineup like that? Um, I, I would always say probably. Well, I mean, you, like, uh, I mean, do you, do you remember those cartoon shows like Transformers and, like, you know, and you saw um, characters in the show uh, who, you know, didn't get, like, toys made of them? You know, like, okay. uh, I'm sure the human characters didn't get toys made of them as far as I'm aware. That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, that, that's another thing. It's, uh, you know, um, so um, I think maybe Buzz Lightyear as Darker Man probably would have been May, because you know, keep in mind the main the main uh, character, along with uh, uh, unless you know you count Zerg, you know, obviously those are the only two um, space toy, you know, space toys that we know of. I think that actually made it into out as you know, if there was, a, I'd imagine that the toy came out first before the series TV series. You know, it's kind of like, you know, because that was the, uh, that was the thing, you know, for 80s cartoons at the time. You know, a lot of these cartoon shows, like My Little Pony and a lot of these shows were, and also Barbie also had her own animated series. Because she, 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 she has a number of them, actually. She has a number of, of TV movies that as well. Surprised. So, you know, like, uh, these media uh, things are, are out there to basically sell the toys. And, uh, dare I, you know, I think uh, Buzz Lightyear Star Command, you know, makes fun of that quite, quite well, actually. In some places, so like I don't think uh, I think yeah, Buzz Lightyear Star Command would have been like a, a vehicle to keep selling these toys along with you know the advertisements you know spinning you know and uh, crazy stuff. Like if you remember those adverts from like the original Toy Story, but uh, I mean yeah, that, that's that's my deal on it. I mean one thing I would also say about it as well, like I'm really surprised given that Buzz Lightyear Star Command was a very successful TV series. I'm really surprised they didn't think look at Woody's Roundup and think hmm, could we do like a Western cartoon series with with Woody? You know, mm-hmm. would have, would that have worked? I mean, that that would have been fun to watch. But uh, anyway, going back into this, um, going back into the into Buzz Lightyear. Um, so um, we also got um, obviously the little green men were also characters in this, but really they were kind of like one character, pretty much. You know, uh, in, with, with, with with the uni mind. And I guess we haven't really talked much about Zerg. I think in this, like again, he reminds me of Doctor Robotnik, but I think he's Doctor Robotnik in in the Avengers of Sonic Hedgehog. I think he's the Doctor Robotnik done right. Like you know, like yeah, he, he's I mean, aware have, uh, that he's evil, and that he's aware yeah. that you know he has some a goofy side to him as well. Like I would say, he's kind of on level with. Uh, I think you know. Uh, I guess you could say you know maybe it's a bit rough to compare this. Maybe Zordrak out of uh, uh, out of um, the. Uh, um, oh, what's uh, it's gone completely out of my head now. That's uh, that, that cartoon show, but you know, Zordrak from from uh, the Dreamstone that's what it's called. But uh, it's maybe maybe Zordrak from the Dreamstone maybe he comes roughly a little bit to like that, but you know, he's like, uh, you, you know, the fact that his henchmen are so incompetent and then he just comes and takes command and then he's you know, he you know that he's the threat and that he's the guy you should be worried about in this alongside Agent Z, you know, like uh, I think I think he's a good villain in this. I think. Yeah, and you know that we have the fact that we have Wayne Knight voicing as Evil Emperor Sir just emphasizes the over the topness. Yeah, uh, that, that was a good casting call, in, in my opinion. I think that was uh, that was a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, happy with the villain. Um, the henchmen are a bit forgettable. I mean, like, I mean, I mean, I make fun of the Avengers of Sonic the Hedgehog, but at least everyone remembers, you know, uh, 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 Scrat and Grounder, and you know, the guys who. Uh, you know the the kind of like you know the, the everyone kind of remembers the henchman, you know the goof, you know the goof, and you know the uh, the uh, the thin guy with you know, the squeaky voice. Like you know everyone mm-hmm. can, everyone remembers that trope. But um, I mean, um, so in this, I think the only kind of main character I kind of remember, you know, really holds on to me, fortunately, is Zerg and probably Agent K- Agent Z. 
And uh, Nick Wayne made you cake for some strange reason. Don't know why. That, that, you, that's Men in Black. That's Men in Black, yeah. Where, by the way, that's coming out. Uh, that's, that's come out recently as well. Yeah, uh, it, but, has, but, it has come out. Yeah. But uh, um, so in, in regards to the villains, I mean, there's really only one main villain besides a- Agent Z, which, you know, you really kind of want to pay attention to, and that's Zerg. You know, I would say Agent Z would probably be a bit more, you know, threatening, dare I say, Zerg, if he was actually written correctly. I think. I think the fact that I think the fact that they gave him away. I think the fact that they gave him away so quickly. I think, and you could tell he was. You could tell he was warp in, in, in this. So I think uh, there was no there was no mystery behind the character. I think uh, they should have just uh, had him somewhat in the background of like you know oh who, who who the heck is that? We haven't been introduced to him yet. And kind of like kept the mystery around him, and then kind of going with the big reveal. I think yeah, then I sure. think that would have, that would have been a thing. I think they gave I think they gave too many clues away that we know who it was. You know. Yeah, but we have to understand that this is, you know, uh, a TV pilot for um, a Disney Channel show. And I guess maybe, you know, for the kids, maybe this will be like their first instance of like, oh, you know, who could this character be? It's kind of like in Big Hero 6, you know, when we got the hint of like who the villain was, who uh, was behind everything. And then it was revealed and, you know, we didn't get that much clues into it. And so... Uh, maybe some people figured it out. Others, they said, oh, wow, that was a great plot twist. So, yeah, yeah I think that Big Hero 6 did it slightly better. Mm-hmm. So, um, obviously, the, um, the first act, I think, set it up pretty well. Uh, second act mm, was a bit, you know, was just... Uh, I mean, the only thing I really remember a lot about the second act was just the introduction of the other characters who would be a part of, you know, Buzz Lightyear's team. But everything else, it's kind of a blur to me. Yeah, well, it's just, it's uh, it was all set up, wasn't it? Like, it was just, it was, uh, you know, spending time with the characters and then uh, realizing what kind of drives them. You know, you you got Booster, who's driven by the fact that he wants to be, he wants to be more than just a janitor. He actually, he actually wants to be a space ranger and the reason why you know he's uh going he's training and he wants to better himself and stuff like that which i think is a really positive character trait i think you have in uh in booster there and then you have xg who uh you know starts off as like you know a copycat buzz and then all of a sudden you know he uh gets made up into kind of like nearly a human character and uh, the uh, little green men are just amazed at how you know they managed to create this character when the you know when the uni mind was gone and so they created him as like nearly human and so uh, he has these you know human characteristics about him being kind of a goofball and then you have uh, the the princess, which I think uh, uh, Nova I think is um, gonna be uh, you know obviously he's badass and uh, you know badass mm-hmm. uh, female characters were kind of a thing at that time. So it was like uh, that was uh, and then so they still are now. But uh, I think um, you know in regards to setting up in the second act, I think that was good. And then in the final act, when you know it all came to you know going on planet Zerg and trying to stop the death ray, pretty much I think uh, yeah, it kind of like it kind of came to a good good conclusion. And uh, so I think I think finally Buzz also going through his character arc of uh, saying like yo he needs more than one partner he needs a team behind him and everything like that I think that I think that was that was a nice th- nice touch at the end. I oh think. yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, I, so, do, so, I do enjoy that. So for me, I think you know uh, I was looking at some of the reviews of this movie and uh, it's not they're not as favorable and I think it's just some people just complaining that uh, you know it's not as you know good as the other Toy Story movies which I think is a bit stupid really for a spin off. It's kind of like saying, yeah. like, you know, like it's kind of like saying Rogue One wasn't as good as The Empire Strikes Back. I mean, come on, it's the, we know this is a spin-off, and we know The Empire Strikes Back is a is a you know a phenomenal Star Wars movie. But uh, I mean, it's, it's a bit fair to judge Buzz Lightyear of Star Command compared to like you know Toy Stories one, two, three, and four. You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to remember that this was a pilot for a TV series, so it's not going to be as like phenomenal. It's not going to be as like groundbreaking and amazing compared to you know Toy Story one and Toy Story two. So, um, and maybe you know, and you know, let's be honest, you know, direct to video, um, you know, Disney films has gotten a huge bad rap, especially since there were so many of them at the time and you know we you know it's kind of like our today's equivalent of the live action remakes so uh you know i I, there's a handful of good ones uh you can listen to that on my podcast where i discuss about the direct-to-video movies with my friend uh chris aka rowdy c and um you know there's there are some you know genuinely good um movies from that studio that was well known for doing their direct-to-video movies um you know a lot of people and to be fair, like, you know, keep in mind, like, this movie was successful enough for it to actually launch the TV series. It went for two seasons and had 65 episodes. So okay. there you go. Yeah, so uh, I think it did something right. So, cool. 
Okay, so uh, that was uh, this episode of Picks Mix. Now, we do promise that uh, once we've seen Toy Story 4, we will do another episode of Picks Mix. So that is still coming up. And also, uh, we're going to try and keep Picks Mix going somewhat, and uh, maybe we'll take a look at some of the shorts in, uh, in, in the future. But uh, until then, my name is Aaron. And my name is Patricia. Take care, and bye for now. See you later. To infinity, and somewhere down the line we'll see Toy Story 4. I promise you. Beyond next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>